Ooh. And transitioned over. I couldn't make myself not still kind of green, but I'm less green than I am in Discord, so that's good. Well, everybody knows you as Grinderbin, so it's fine for you to be green. <laughs> green Durbin? Green Durbin. <laughs> I thought that's what the joke you were going for, and then I was like, oh, it's probably no. just the actual. No, it's because he's a plant. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, and his color, too. I forgot. It's yeah. kind of like teal. It's sort of teal. But teal is a green. It is. It's like right. a greenish blue. Green's in the name. So. Wow, why do I look so dark? Hang on. Yeah, you're, you're, I think your outside light may have uh, gone behind a cloud or something. Yeah, it did. Because it suddenly just darkened all right cool let me Hello, drop that one lord Z zine zine wait oh yeah zine? that's great. no that's lord reffa reffa where's our oh no that's lord zine yeah lord, lord zine, reffa is a completely different person Hello, Deebs. yes i know lord reffa because their name is lord reffa this guy's name is lord zine <laughs> yeah so oh, many lady. so many lords in the chat no ladies though <laughs> just lords <laughs> oh, Lampy. What a time. Resubscribed. Uh, at tier three for 16 months. It says, FYI, it's been 16 months. Thanks for the reminder. Yeah. For your. Oh my god. Are we doing chipmunk? Okay, it's leaving. Good. Thanks, Lampy. I really appreciate it. Would you be what a doggone supporter, uh, huh? Would you be happier or not if you looked outside and the squirrels weren't like they weren't messing with your plants, but they were like doing a drug deal out in your yard? You're like, huh? What are you doing? Okay, just you do you, squirrels, as long as you're not messing with plants. What drugs are they dealing? See, because the drug they care about. Because weed's legal here. Like that's so it is. That's just really in <laughs> Virginia. A, yeah. I need to drive up there. <laughs> Wait, it's, isn't it legal in North Carolina? Or is it oh. just the synthetic stuff? Yeah, THC is, or no, um, not THC. What do you call it? Delta 8 is, but uh, they haven't legalized weed yet here. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, Delta 8 and uh, weed is legal in Virginia. So oh. the shops carry both. Well, that's good news for you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, whole whole different story that we don't get into today. Also, the notifications are behind you, Jesse. Are they? Uh oh. All right, I can fix that. <laughs> it is indeed pronounced Zine. Yes, Lord Reffa is also here. Oh, good. Have I, I seen the picture? I liked how he said it's pronounced Zine, as in, <laughs> but he just spelled Zine. It's like Xine. <laughs> Uh, also, Narf, I have not seen this mushroom goddess on Twitter. Please link it. I want to see. Is it the thing from, uh, which I, I've been seeing a lot of, and I'm assuming it's from Elden Ring? The one with four arms? I don't know what she is. I've just seen her a lot lately. Oh, I don't know. Uh, oh, I gotta change this. Hang on. In case there are more notifications. Let's go right, Patreon. Nope. Go focus. Sub animation. It certainly is behind me. That's not where it should be. All right. There we go. Animations shall now play out in front of me. And all will be well. I, I worry that squirrel drug deals will attract worse squirrel crime. <laughs> yeah so if they were do, you know if they were like passing heroin i'd be i'd be concerned or if they were passing into the trash can they say no no drugs here <laughs> squirrels yeah but if they, were, if they were just like exchanging nuts for mushrooms okay would you be able to identify a drug mushroom or would you just be like, that's, oh, they're no, making a pizza? Not, I would not be there able to. That's why I would be like, ah, it's probably fine. I and probably pizza. just making a pizza. <laughs> uh, 
Did I catch a Chef Choice platter video? I did not. I have to look at that. Oh, I thought there's a shadow of my microphone, but I lifted up my hand to like uh, brush my uh, nose. I thought I had a tattoo on the back of my hand for a second. I was like, when did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> Seems like something you should have known about, but it's a surprise. All right, hi everybody. This is our unofficial intro of us just talking. How we usually do it. Yeah, I I just feel comfortable. I don't know. It's like there's no... Maybe it's unprofessional, but I feel like there's, there's like... People kind of filter in. Like, you've got a few... Like, we got some people in here now. It's like, sweet, you know, they're in here. But, like, people generally filter in after, like, ten minutes. And it's nice to just kind of do a little back and forth, chat it up with chat talk with you like do just kind of be social for a bit and then get into the topic Ooh, a link yeah you should you should do one just to throw them off where it's like a college uh what do you call it um sure where if someone comes in you just stop and you acknowledge that they're late <laughs> that'd be fun Oh, I do like this image. Oh, that is cool. Let me see if it's who I've been seeing. I don't no. know if that's from Elden Ring. It is not who I've been seeing. That's super cool. Also, I've been seeing so many at the Ren Fair. So many people with like mushroom cap hats and like an outfit kind of themed around a mushroom. And I have no idea why this is such a trend. I'm here for it, obviously, but like, where is this coming from? You oh, know, hey, Discord, it yeah. can't be it can't be disproven. So let's say it's coming from Grinderbin. <laughs> sure. I've started something wild here. Oh, uh, like the mushroom. I get it. <laughs> yep, I definitely intended that pun. Don't question it. Never have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, hey, pants. How are you doing? It's all just, yeah, Lampy agrees with you. Take credit and say it's because adventure is nigh. I think I'll yeah. do that. That's a good call. Have you gotten any fan art of Grindervin yet? I have. It's, That's got to feel cool. It feels amazing. There's been like three career highlights. We're going to start after we finish talking about this, I promise. There's been three career highlights in like as a creator in... in like, since Ventures Night started specifically with Grinderbin. One, yes, people have made fan art, and that is such a cool thing to see someone go, look, I drew this. And they, they draw, like, all the characters. It's not like, I only drew Grinderbin, because the rest of them suck. They draw, they draw them all, and it's great. They're all great. Uh, and two, someone made a 3D printed, like, they went on Hero Forge and made a little character and painted it. And they made the closest grinder bin they could. So they have a physical grinder bin little thing that sits on their shelf with like Yeah. Uh on the shelf with like the the Firefly spaceship and spawn. And I was like, this is amazing. That's really cool. Uh I that's wow. Never like that's a thing you want, but you're like, yeah, when'll that happen? And then it happened. Uh and then someone else Use Grinderbin. They added me on Twitter. They were saying they were using Grinderbin and one of their players before they could finish. They were like reading a letter about the shop or something. And before they could finish the letter, one of their players was like, Oh, is this from that like mushroom person? <laughs> it was like, Oh my gosh. So, someone well, who's I not directly using the mobile market knew who it was. Whoa. Well, I. I do have to say, like, it makes sense to me because nothing on, you know, Yahtzee, Casey, or uh, Amy, but not, like, their characters are, are good, but, you know, you've seen Cat Person, Elf, and other <laughs> confusing, uh, but Mushroom is fairly new, and it's kind of, it's always fresh to see, like, a, a, a new idea get popular and get exposed. 
like if you made a guy who's like, can you be like a a, a, a sentient fridge golem? <laughs> like you were like, I've never seen a fridge golem. Let me make some fan art. Never drawn that before. Oh my gosh, senti I'm sorry, I have to write that down. Give me one second. Uh, let me just, you know, above all my other notes, let me just put sentient fridge golem, which isn't too far from a character I made for a like one shot that was basically a, a walking fridge of, that was a weapons locker. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. I had a, a, a well, we'll talk about it in the story thing. It's a pretty good example. <laughs> Pants us. First of all, uh, no, I did not know there was horny adventures and I fan art. Please let me know. Uh, I That's hilarious and I must see. Uh, <laughs> and on that, Pant says, smush the mush. That's funny. <laughs> uh, all right. So we're going to talk about a real thing today. If you guys, if any of you have questions, feel free to, oh, shoot. What's just, what's alerting? I can't actually read that. What's happening? You oh, got, Crawdad uh, resubscribed. Uh, yeah. Crawdad, thank you. I am very happy you're here and that you resubscribed. I appreciate it. Um, so, planning stuff for your campaign, mm -hmm. along with changing your plans because players did something. Boy, howdy, can they do so many things. It's kind of like it's yes. the most free game in the possible universe, and you yes. don't know what Before can happen. Before we get into that, though, yeah. I would like to address, there's a lot of people who do know who I am. Oh my gosh, should I not? Don't. I got, I'm <laughs> no, so we just sorry. <laughs> we were just but. talking. I'm here with my good friend, who I actually yes. met, like, mm -hmm. freaking t 10 years ago or something, maybe longer. It's been over a decade, yeah. Yeah playing rpgs rpg blight yes hello um and introduce yourself uh, my i do videos on youtube um starting a uh, it, it's a slow process but it's hopefully gonna get faster soon or i'm reviewing cat and uh categorizing all uh movies that have ever been made um well it's save state cinema but anyway, <laughs> the the thing that I really wanted to say is the reason I, I wanted to come on here is for the credentials of Jesse and I have both been GMs for each other. Uh, we have both played. Uh, we were part of a group that had three GMs in it, and we played every Wednesday night from about 11 p.m. to sunrise every wednesday for about two years straight and we did a, a lot of games in that time and i feel like this is a good topic for us because we can ask questions behind the scenes that help answer these rpg blight yeah why not <laughs> <laughs> i like it uh there were other players lampy just three of us were active gms it got so big it got too big yeah that's another thing is how many players is too many players and i say when one active battle turn takes 20 minutes you have too many players probably or you have too many players for that system and you just need to change it up but that's true and it also depends on like how seasoned everybody is because if you i've played games with like six people in them that everybody had been playing rpgs for a long time and like turns were going fast because everybody was like i've got a plan boom execute go next uh mm -hmm. which is cool and it, that's not to say like that you know you have to strive to that or that you know oh new people slow it down but like it depending on the dynamic of that it can change how many a like good size is mm -hmm. sure <laughs> he's reviewing the situation but yeah, we had a bunch of people in that, but three of us were like actively switching as GMs throughout, mm -hmm. which was really fun. Yeah. So yeah, it's always fun to see a different um, in that exposed to. At least I did. I'm sure you have multiple times since and before. But that was really my first big RPG group, 
and that was a good thing to see like how different people gm different ways and what they value as important mm -hmm. and also um throwing uh sort of changing up the roster to see like how people dynamically want to handle different situations like yeah what's this person's go-to like are they even if they're not being stealthy do they constantly want to be stealthy does this person always want to be clever like i ran into the problem when i was doing um blunt trauma because i like trying to figure a situation out but because i made the character who he was i wasn't allowed to <laughs> and there was half the time where I'm like i know the answer but i don't know the an answer <laughs> so i can't do it <laughs> Yeah, you as the player understand. You as the character is like, I don't get it. <laughs> Lampy, we'll we'll get to that, I'm sure. <laughs> this is so blight. How do you stop Jesse metagaming in an RG? I, I was actually a GM who really welcomed that stuff. Uh, but we'll we'll sort of exp that leads into another question. So yeah, if you all have questions, we have our questions that we know we want to cover just in case for some reason no one has anything to say. Uh, but if you have questions, put them in chat. And if you start it with a big capital Q, that'll help me see it just in case chat moves too fast. Sometimes it does. Most time it doesn't. But just in case. Um, but our first thing I really wanted to get into was like for you personally how much do you plan out before the campaign begins what do you plan like during and s sort of how like detailed and granular do you get with it how like broad strokes are you like what just in a general sense what do you plan out beforehand um typically what i do th this is this is my go to for a story as i i in detail plan what I want to occur for the ending. Then I spend a lot of time set up the beginning. And then in the middle, I kind of have like, I stop at the outline phase, we'll say, where it's like, okay, I'd like this to happen at some point, this to happen at some point, this to happen. But I let them be situations that are vague enough that they're more just settings. Like uh, at some point I want to go to a swamp. At some point I'd like to work in a castle. At some point I'd like to work in like a lab somewhere and um just kind of have those ideas floating around and let them be you know able to be rearranged in any specific situation but what i like to do more than anything is go okay i've got to know where i want to end up because i want to throw sort of sprinkles of of mystery or of, uh, mystery that lead to the possible ending at the very beginning and if i don't know where i want it to go I'm likely going to throw something in there because this has happened before with not naming names, but you where somebody caught something at the beginning that I didn't think was very important, but turned out to be important because other bits of dialogue had led to it. And it was like something that people like, OK, I'm going to remember that because I feel like it's going to come up again. And then all the time I'm going, I don't remember that. And that wasn't important, <laughs> but the players don't know that. So what you want to do is, you know, like if I if I named a god and then I forgot that name at the, uh, in the beginning and I forgot it and I was calling him somebody else and like someone goes, well, what about so and so like who like the god you mentioned at the beginning? And it's like, I hate going, oh, that was wrong. Every all your <laughs> anticipation is just thrown apart because mm -hmm. uh, one thing that's going to come up more more times than any uh, during this discussion is. I improv uh, when I do um, GMing and in the sense of I yes and it. I don't really break anything down. So if somebody remembered a name of like someone really important and I didn't bring it up again, I would then have to immediately go, oh, right. And then hold on to that thought and bring them into the story as well. So now I've got two final bosses <laughs> because I just forgot. So... But I feel like obsessing over every little detail is only offering your players more and more situations to completely veer off course. Mm -hmm. And then you have two options. You can either abandon everything and sort of go into an unknown or do something that's kind of lame and steer them back in the direction you want them to go. And having been on both sides, that I definitely prefer the 
yes and versus let's make this like a video game i know it's going to be really good and i want you guys to see what i've prepared but it's also like it shows in the future that you're not going to be allowed to make creative choices because i'm not prepared for that mm -hmm. yeah i think that's uh, what you said like right at the beginning is my biggest like yes this is this is how it is is being able to move that that stuff around where mm -hmm. you're like i want i have ideas for a lab and like it doesn't have to be tied to the beginning or necessarily this character you can have ideas for how it could happen at the beginning or happen to this character but that you're fluid enough to be able to move that around and shuffle it and use it when it's most uh like most appropriate or you know can fill a slot that needs it best mm -hmm. and, um oh, go ahead well, I was just going to say that this, this may lead to a different question. So you can you go ahead and finish your thought because we might kind of pull away from that. Oh, uh, yeah. I And I, you mentioned also having like an idea for the end or like knowing mm -hmm. you want to go somewhere and then work backwards from there, which I think is fun and useful because if you know where you're winding up, if you know where you want things to go, it makes improv easier. Because you know, I I need them to go to this castle and find out that the castle is actually uh, a living creature that is going to come to life and big twist, they're inside of it. Oh no. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, so you know, okay, well, how can you get there? There's, you can have planned ways to get there, but there's so many ways that you can kind of change up and players can be like, well, I'll do this. You'd be like, okay, that's cool. We can, I can still maneuver them that way and still have this reveal, even if they're go doing something I wasn't expecting. So I fully agree with you on that. And like incorporating the best you can. Yeah. So what were you, what were you bring up? Cause we can derail uh, that. What I, w what I was going to bring up is, um, Per, my personal favorite thing to do is um, not not have anything planned, but sort of let the players change the story. Like at the end of each session, I think good practice is to, unless you're like still in the middle of a battle, then save it. But like at the end of a session, go, you know, okay, you, you give them multiple path options and sort of give them vague clues on where they're going to end up and let them decide what, what comes next because mm -hmm. then you have a full week or however long you've got to set up what the next thing is going to be. Uh, players have carved their own sculpture and then they can enjoy it and you can enjoy it. And I, I feel that one of the biggest flaws in a, in a GM is this mentality of it's my job to kill you and that's not the case yeah. it's your job to create an engaging story with challenges what you want to do is encourage your players to see the end and if you constantly throw things at them where they barely survive I guarantee you most players will be like yeah I'm not investing this much time in dying I really don't want to they not necessarily quit, but they're going to be a lot more reserved than you want them to be, and then it's just going to fall into a pattern of formulaity that's just, in my opinion, very boring. Mm -hmm. um, I love it when a player finds a loophole in a rule book and goes, would this work? And I'm <laughs> like, I don't see why it wouldn't. Let's see what it does. <laughs> and just like, I, I kind of like to do I'll throw loopholes to myself or I'll give them like, you know, I, I'm like, okay, just on the fly. I'll think of, Oh, that would be cool for right now. Based on what just happened. I'm not prepared for it, but let's see what happens. And if mm -hmm. I can't fix it, well, I'll just tunnel back to the original place, but I want to give players the opportunity to, you know, like, please stretch your legs in this world. Like mm -hmm. a great example was, uh, our friend, I guess it doesn't matter if I say his name, the guy, uh, when he let, when we were playing um, Pathfinder and he let me do a bluff check when we beat the Lich King to bluff my way into being the new king 
And then he was like, you know what? That wasn't what I was planning, but yeah, let's go for it. And then the entire plot line became, this kingdom wants to take, take over every other kingdom. And it's just like, whatever he had planned, it's just like, it's a fun surprise for everyone when all the players and the GM are cultivating a story that they didn't foresee. And I think it's just worked so much better than we've plot out this entire roadmap and we're going to follow it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, if you want to, if you want a linear straight line story, write a book like mm -hmm. that. That's, that's a great idea, but there has to be, yeah, a level of interaction if you want to do an RPG. I absolutely agree with you on that. Mm -hmm. I think that was well put, sir. Thank you. <laughs> uh, um, as far as a question I had for you, we can oh, trade yeah. back and forth. <sighs> yeah. Or we can do like the full list and then I can I can do mine. Let me let me bring up a few comments in uh, the chat. Oh, sure, go ahead. And then, and then we'll go to that question. I'm, I'm just used to talking to you. I keep forgetting there's a ch chat sitter. Because <laughs> this is just normal for us. We just talk yeah, about this. this. this this, this is how we talk. <laughs> uh, Lord Zine was saying, uh, players who collaborate and add to the story, heroes, love them. Players who disrupt and derail the story, get into the sea. Yeah, I, it, there is a difference between like trying to, as a player, advance the story and trying to, kind of what you were saying, on mm -hmm. the player side of the GM being like, my goal is to kill you, where that's just as bad as on the player side where it's like my goal is to derail you it's yeah, like my goal is to cause disruption right like whether by finding the ultimate loophole so you can make pun pun um or that you and then complain if like you can't be an infinite person uh or you know just everything that looks like this is where we're supposed to go i'm gonna do the opposite like yeah it's Mm -hmm. It's collaborative storytelling. Got to be collaborative. I, I don't like to stifle anybody's creativity, but I'm a, uh, I'm a vampire, uh, the masquerade GM. Like that's the one I have the most experience with. I do have one rule: if you have never played uh, vampire, you are not allowed to run a Malkavian for your first game <laughs> because that is a hundred percent of the time what people do. They're like, I'm crazy, right? I was to throw everything off kilter. Like, no. No, you did it well. That's the thing. You played Malkavian, but understood that insanity doesn't do everything the GM doesn't want me to do. It's I'm going to use the craziness the game has set up for me in a way that makes the game interesting. I literally had people who were like, oh, you know, we're trapped. Uh, th this... This is just a made up example, but this is exactly what somebody would have done. Or it's like, oh, you've been held up in this place, but you've had time to board the windows and, you know, the sun's rising. He goes, I'm 